Yeah, change, change is never easy, certainly very difficult, and maybe it's better that it be difficult. And what Sheila outlined there it sort of shocks us into the realisation that there has to be major cultural shift and there's an awful lot to be done. Um, that's where Inclusion Ireland comes into its own. We represent people with disabilities and their families, and it's up to us to monitor that change and to force that change and to make sure it's it's good change at the end of the day. Our next speaker is Dr. Kevin McCoy, Chair of the Ours Attractor Assurance Review Group. Now, Dr. McCoy has very broad experience in the whole area, and uh, I'm sure it's, it's appropriate that he continue on from what Sheila has said there. So, listen to Kevin. Yeah. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks to Inclusion Ireland for inviting me to speak this morning. Um, I hope you will um, find uh, what I'm about to say uh, of some interest. It's uh, it's very much work, work in progress, but um, uh, we'll we'll be going ahead over the next months uh, to uh, deliver on the agenda that we have been given. Maybe a, a word or two about Iris Attracta. It's uh, a couple of words which have come into very common currency in, in recent times. Um, it is a HSE-run facility based in Swinford in County Mayo. Um, it was opened around 30 years ago, uh, and it is on a site of about 10 acres on the outskirts of Swinford. Um, there currently, the last figures I have uh, indicate that there were um, 96 residents in the site, uh, or in, uh, accommodated in a number of units and bungalows. Um, 59 of those were male and 37 female. And the vast majority are over 60. 50 of the 96 were over 50 and only four in the 30 to 39 years of age. Most of the people came from home. Uh, in fact, 30 of the uh, residents came from home and the next biggest group, 29, came from St Mary's Hospital in Castle Bar, with the remainder being sort of, um, uh, um, in some ways, relocated from other facilities throughout the country, uh, Dublin, Cork, other places as well. Now, in terms of admissions, most of the admissions took place in the first three years uh, of the place opening. Uh, in the years 2008 and 2009, there were no admissions, and in the year 2010 and 2011, there was one admission in each of those years. So it's not as if there's a large number of people actually going in to a large institution like Ars Attractive. Most of the people have been there for a long period of time. So it's, it's important to bear that in mind. So. The task we have been given by the HSE is really to provide an assurance that the standards of care meet the needs of the service users. Um, and um, to do that, uh, we really have to uh, undertake a number of tasks. The first of those is to review uh, a range of inspections and audits which have been undertaken uh, in um, RS Attracta in the years 2014 to 2015. Uh, we want then to look at the programme of work which is underway uh, by management in our attractor to implement the various actions and recommendations from those inspections and to identify any gaps uh, in the work that they are doing. Most importantly though, what we want to do is to look at how effective uh, the work is. Effective in the sense of improving the quality of life for the residents who are there. We also want to look at, uh, to see whether we can identify what caused people to abuse the residents who were there in the way which they did, and to see whether we can identify any contributory factors which may have facilitated that abuse happening. Sheila has already mentioned this, and I think it's an important piece of work that we have to do. Now, I think it's important to um, get this into a, a context in terms of uh, 
the, the size of the, the tasks that we have. During um, 2014 and through to just recently, last week, uh, there have been 11 inspections and audits in, uh, on Iris Attractor. The last uh, three reports by HICWA uh, referred to an announced inspection which was carried out in September and um, two unannounced inspections which were carried out in uh, January of 2015. Now, <coughs> excuse me. all of those reports um, have led to ex in excess of 150 recommendations and actions which the management of Irish Attractor are expected to address. Now, by any stretch of the imagination, that is quite a burden which has been placed on management down there, and it's important to bear that in mind. Um, um, not making any excuses in, in a sense, but when you're faced with 11 inspection reports, 150 recommendations, it's a big burden to undertake and you can only do it at the expense of other work which you may be doing. So um, it's, it's a twin track approach which the management have to face. They have to deliver the care, quality care for the residents who are currently there and they have to then respond to these various uh, recommendations. In terms, not all, re all recommendations carry equal weight and uh, what we've done at this stage is to analyse the recommendations that have been made and uh, we find that um, the most recommendations in all of the reports, uh, the meeting of healthcare needs is, um, uh, has, has the most recommendations um, and that includes issues like nutrition uh, and other healthcare <coughs> issues. Um, meeting staff needs, for example, and the next one up there, uh, refers to staff training and the requirement for staff to be well aware of uh, abuse and how it may happen and what to do when it does happen. Another important set of recommendations is around leadership and direction and what we have found in the analysis of the uh, recommendations is that uh, leadership and direction and general governance of the site uh, requires a considerable amount of attention. Um, and then, of course, there are recommendations around ensuring that residents are safe and protected. Now, how are we going to uh, tackle that task? And that's as far as we've really got at this point in time. We're going to um, undertake a programme of work um, which will be at two levels. One, we will be talking to senior management uh, and to management at the bungalow and unit level. Uh, we're going to engage with the management staff in the completion of self-evaluation questionnaires covering all of the recommendations from the uh, inspections, audits and reviews that have been done. And um, to do that, as I say, at two levels, one senior management and uh, bungalow level. Now, what we will be doing there, we'll be seeking the information on recommendations that have been implemented, partially implemented or not implemented, uh, together with any supporting evidence and uh, we will then um, go down to our subtractor and spend some time there um, uh, meeting uh, the, the managers on site to validate the information and to check on progress. We'll be looking for any uh, relevant information, any materials to ascertain what the measures have been taken to improve the standards of care uh, and we will be looking for evidence to support those changes and to make sure that they're embedded in practice and in the culture of the organisation. And as uh, Sheila has already mentioned, uh, what we have done so far is that we have uh, held meetings uh, with residents. We had two meetings with residents, uh, with families. We had also two meetings with groups of uh, family members uh, and advocates. And uh, we had a total of uh, six meetings with staff um, uh, just so that we were able to accommodate uh, the, the shift patterns which were uh, in place at the time. Some people were unable to come to those meetings and we have arranged to see them individually uh, and we still have a few more uh, to see. All of those meetings are vitally important because they do give us uh, a face-to-face -face, um, 
uh, sense of uh, a, a number of very important issues which we will need to address in looking at the quality of life for people in Arras. Now, I want to mention um, another piece of work which we will be doing, and that is um, part of our terms of reference ask us to take account of um, the wider uh, intellectual disability field and the providers who um, uh, provide services there uh, with special interest groups such as yourselves, Inclusion Ireland and others, and um, various academic interests um, to really look at what would actually um, reduce the risk of abuse. Now, our starting point for that is that there's no single step a service can take that will absolutely prevent people supported by that service from being abused, neglected, mistreated or exploited. There's no magic wand. Uh, even with video cameras, there'll always be dark corners, private places, black spots, but a combination of strategies which, uh, taken together, uh, amount to a well-run service which greatly reduces the risk of abuse whatever, of whatever kind. And indeed, protection from abuse is like a nation's freedom. It's the result of eternal vigilance. You have to be always on your guard about it. So we will be producing a document which is um, based um, on um, the following principle. And the principle is that a service which has a positive vision for people with disabilities, that has effective management, that recruits and supports the right staff, and delivers the service in the right setting, and that actively empowers the people it supports, will greatly reduce the risk of individuals being abused. So those are our five sort of theme uh, elements of our strategy. We say we intend to um, uh, seek uh, views from a wide range of uh, interested parties, and we will be doing that later on in the year. And what we hope, uh, as a result of the consultation, is that we will be able to identify uh, good practice, good practice which ensures dignity and care, which uh, helps to prevent abuse, and uh, to make sure that we uh, are able to identify those areas where there is significant user involvement in safeguarding. I think it's a slight paradox in some ways that uh, what you have at the moment is a major emphasis on training staff in relation to abuse, what constitutes abuse, how to respond to it and what to do uh, when it's been identified. And yet, we don't put any resources into training uh, our residents and the people who use our services to actually understand what is abusive behaviour and how, what to do uh, when, it, when it occurs. And I think that's something we really do need to uh, in, well, in, 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 uh, sort of change in terms of our attitudes and approaches. I think it's also important that we um, try to um, ensure that there is user involvement uh, in safeguarding. Involvement in the way that I've described, but also I think involvement in the way that uh, staff are trained and that they do take account of the views of service users and uh, make sure that um, they hear, hear the messages directly from the people that they are serving. So what do we hope to get out of all of this? We will produce a report on Ars Attracta that will follow the terms of reference which are set for the review and which I had up uh, earlier in the, in the presentation. We've been asked to produce a report on each unit and bungalow uh, with recommendations in relation to the specific improvements required. And as I said, we want to produce a good practice handbook in response to the consultation document which we will issue. Now, so let's just see where we're at in terms of Four months on, uh, it's a question of taking stock in, in some ways. We have uh, reviewed all the uh, available reports uh, that we've had um, uh, given to us. We've uh, had a preliminary visit to Irish Attractor and a meeting with the senior management there. 
We were held up in some ways uh, on two fronts. One was that we were unable to uh, meet with staff and residents because of the ongoing Garda investigation and we couldn't cut across the work that they were doing. And secondly, we were conscious of the fact that um, uh, HICWA, the regulator, had um, undertaken these new inspections and we wanted to await the outcome of those inspections and the availability of the reports so that we could then draw a line under the various reviews and inspections uh, which um, were done. We um, haven't been idle in the sense we've been uh, working on the self-evaluation questionnaires uh, and we're now at the point where, in fact, uh, the final versions of those questionnaires have been uh, prepared. We have a, an outline of our consultation document and we've had our meetings with the residents, families, advocates and the staff. Now, for the next quarter then, um, we uh, will be following up our meetings with individual questionnaires to residents, families uh, and advocates and staff. And that's really because uh, at the meetings, as you can appreciate, there are some people who um, are very happy to contribute and talk. Others um, play a slightly more passive um, uh, role and they listen very carefully to what is being said and maybe don't feel confident about speaking up. So the questionnaires will give them an opportunity to feed back to us in a very uh, anonymous fashion uh, any views that they might have. Uh, so we will have those returned to us um, and then we will begin to look at a validation of the information which has been returned by RS Attractor and to look at the assessment of effectiveness and then the preparation of our consultation document. Quarter three then um, sees us really in the autumn uh, going into uh, the validation uh, of, the, of the information uh, will continue. Um, bearing in mind that we have um, we will have 11 reports to produce. Uh, we have a report on RS Attractor generally and we will have a report on each of the units and bungalows which are on site there. We'll have issued the consultation document and uh, we will have hopefully the responses um, to that document uh, to consider. And then finally, um, by quarter four, uh, we will have the preparation <coughs> of all the reports and bungalows ready for uh, submission to the commissioner of the exercise and the development of the good practice handbook for dissemination to the wider sector. Uh, that's um, where we're at at the moment. It's, um, it's quite a challenging task that we've got, um, but I think it's one that hopefully will produce uh, improvement in the quality of life uh, for the residents who are there. Uh, I'm appreciative that there is this move towards the uh, move away from congregated settings, but I think you will find, you will maybe be aware from the figures which I gave you earlier, that most of the people in Aris Attractor have been there for a long period of time. It is their home. And um, uh, personally, I can't see any rapid um, sort of uh, downsizing of the facility there uh, within certainly the period of time that we're going to be working. So there we are. That's where we're at at the moment. So thank you.